2025 has been one of those years for Home Assistant. It wasn't about one massive headline feature, and if you blinked, you probably missed something new. It was about Home Assistant becoming more reliable, more usable, and far more polished than it's ever been. So for my day 12 Christmas video, I want to take a look back at what actually changed in Home Assistant during 2025 and the features that really mattered. Hey everyone, my name's Simon and welcome to a new video on Byte of Geek, a channel that's all about Home Assistant and Smart Home technology. This is the final video in my Smart Home Christmas series and it felt right to finish the year off by looking back at Home Assistant in 2025 because honestly it's been one of the most important years for the platform. There's been so much released over the last 12 months but I want to cut through the noise and focus on what really changed because 2025 quietly reshaped Home Assistant in some pretty important ways. So let's jump back to the start of the year and see how it all began because January and February fundamentally changed how Home Assistant protects your setup. The backup system was completely rebuilt, offering us new automated schedule backups, encrypted backups by default, built-in backup retention, and for the first time, official Home Assistant cloud backups. Whilst this probably wasn't the most exciting thing for those that like their dashboards and automations, it definitely was a huge step forward for Home Assistant. And the following month, things didn't slow down as the team improved things even further with unencrypted backups, customized backup schedules, and the introduction of integrations to store your backups to Google Drive and Microsoft OneDrive. No longer were backups an afterthought, they were now just part of the platform. Moving into March and April, and we saw the Home Assistant team starting to introduce some significant upgrades to the dashboards. They treated us to new headers, allowing you to get creative with your welcome text, especially with the addition of markdown and templates. We got some welcome updates to the tile card with new features, positioning, interactions, and big improvements to the editor for the card. But it didn't stop there though, as the team also introduced the new Experimental Areas dashboard as an alternative to the default dashboard. Voice took another huge step forward with the introduction of continued conversations, doing away with the need to repeatedly say, OK Naboo, every time you wanted to ask something. And Assist didn't miss out either, with streaming LLM responses being introduced, making it easier to chat to. We also got an update on the vision of the Open Home Foundation and its current position, along with exciting news that both Music Assistant and Hacks had been donated by their authors to the Open Home Foundation. And on top of that, we heard that worldwide, Home Assistant had reached a massive 2 million active installations at the end of 2024. Let me know in the comments what you think that figure will be at the end of 2025. As we approach the halfway point of 2025 with the May and June updates, Home Assistant gained some very nice quality of life improvements, including even more features added to backups, a new entity picker, and a fresh lick of paint to the device picker. Bluetooth devices got a new visualization map showing you how those devices were connected, and Z-Wave long range support was added just in time for the new, not so secretive, Z-Wave antenna. There was also the huge announcement that select installation methods and 32-bit versions of Home Assistant were now being deprecated, a move that would no doubt prepare Home Assistant for the future. As we went into the summer months of July and August with a heat wave in most of Europe and the Home Assistant team taking a well-earned break, we got to look forward to a new ask a question action, allowing us to build custom conversations with Assist and thus enabling you to keep the interaction going. Areas took a step forward with a complete redesign of the area card and the experimental areas dashboard took advantage of that to introduce a less cluttered view of things with easier control of devices. We also had the addition of the exciting new AI task and suggest with AI features 
new functionality that allowed you to create some really interesting interactions in your AI driven automations. Rounding things off for August was the release of the Home Assistant Connect ZWA2, the not so secret Z Wave antenna that supports Z Wave long range. The start of the autumn months kicked off with Home Assistant celebrating its 12th birthday and everyone got the biggest release of the year. We got a new home dashboard and intelligent ones too, a massive set of updates to the tile card, adding trend charts and media player controls amongst many other features, allowing you to create clean modern dashboards without having to resort to adding custom cards and upgrades to the automation editor, which continued through into October, bringing much needed improvements to this core part of the system. We even got the ability to generate images using AI, a feature that I'm sure many people will have played around with once they saw the example. Let me know in the comments if that's something that you tried out. As we approach the last of the Home Assistant releases for 2025, we were definitely ending the year with a bang. The automation editor, which had received so much focus during the year, continued to improve with a brand new target picker and purpose specific triggers and conditions, providing clarity and detail and making it easier to create scalable automations for your smart home. We got even more dashboard improvements, new real-time power monitoring for the energy dashboard and a change to experimental dashboards. And out of the blue, we got snowflakes just in time for Christmas, courtesy of the new Home Assistant Labs functionality that allowed us to provide feedback on new features before they went into general release. At the end of 2025, Home Assistant feels more mature than ever. Not because of one big feature, but because everything around it just works better. There hasn't been one standout feature, more a collection of improvements to the foundations that paves the way for progress going forward. It's become more approachable and polished with much needed upgrades to the editors. And honestly, for a day 12 video, I think this kind of quiet progress sums Home Assistant up perfectly. My personal favourites from this year would have to be the improvements to the automations, dashboards and the responsible use of AI within Home Assistant. But there's been a lot to appreciate. So what have been your favourites from 2025? Let me know down below in the comments. If you enjoyed this year in review, give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, have a cracking new year and as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.